Hello, sewing friends. Got a great show for you tonight. Are you curious about uh, crafting with making creations with vinyl, sublimation, cut files, embroidery? Uh, what about mixing and matching all of these together? Well, wait till you hear from my guest because she is truly an expert in all of those things. Welcome to the Let's Go Sew with Joanne Banco live show, where sewing friends gather to learn to make the most of their machines. And in tonight's case, learn to make the most of many um, materials and products and pieces and parts that we can use together with our machines in our creative space to make some really, really beautiful things. So my guest tonight is Stephanie Young from So Stephanie Says. Let me tell you a little bit about her. Um, let's see, get, get her picture up here first of all. <laughs> Stephanie Young is a self-proclaimed professional crafter. I like that. <laughs> she actually holds the title of craft coordinator for Caesar North America. And I know she's going to be super proud of me for saying that the right way. It is Caesar, S-I-S-E-R. And Caesar is an industry leader in um, heat transfer vinyl and um, pressure sensitive vinyl. So she gave me the little, little abbreviations, HTV and PSV. And, you know, she might throw a few of those three letter, three letter uh, things at you tonight. And if she does and we don't know what she's talking about, we will be sure to ask her. So <laughs> I'm going to go ahead and just... Um, Kind of take a peek at the comments real quicker to make sure you're hearing me. It looks like it. Good. I'm glad. But uh, Stephanie is truly, like I said, uh, she's an expert in all things um, that that have to do with vinyl, sublimation, cut files, and embroidery. She um, is a licensed silhouette instructor and currently provides video instruction on Caesar's newest products. That is so exciting. We're going to learn more about that today. Stephanie educates on all things vinyl, embroidery, sublimation, and offers helpful tips and tricks no matter what the topic is. So let's say hello to Stephanie. Hey, Stephanie. Wow, what an intro. I kind of, I, 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 I sit a little taller in my chair now. What an intro. <laughs> you should be sitting taller in your chair. Absolutely. Would you believe we have a million friends in here already? Well, maybe oh, not a million. Goodness. <laughs> <laughs> but a whole bunch of them, a whole, whole bunch. So I'm seeing some names I recognize. So, hey, everybody, thanks for coming out and watching us tonight. Yeah, we're so glad to all have you all here. So hello to the Let's Go So family of friends, because that's what we are. We're a, we're a bunch of friends that um, feel like family, right? <laughs> that's right. That's right. Oh, let's see who's here. We got to say hi to some people. So we've got... Um, so Francie is here and she, uh, uh, let's see, she, yeah, I goofed up on my dates when I first announced a few things, but I, I caught it right away and sent out a, <laughs> sent out a oops, <laughs> but hopefully everybody found it. And let's see, Jenny's here. Hey, Jenny, I'm glad you're here. My friend Kathy is here. Kathy's not too far from me, from me as the crow flies, as they say. Um, Sharon's here. Hey, Sharon, Julie. June, um, my friend June is also local and she knows you well. And she was, was going to say she's a friend of mine, too. He is a friend of yours. And she was so excited <laughs> that we got together here. I didn't even tell her that you were coming on. I just kind of let her find out from the announcements. <laughs> Jill's here from Tennessee, Michelle from Illinois, and our friend um, uh, Reen is here. Uh, she's saying hi to somebody else on the chat. But hey, Reen from Embroidery Garden, we're glad you're here. Crafting with Marilyn's here. Patricia's here. Star Raymond. Lottie's here. Hey, Lottie. Kathleen. Conchita. What a pretty name. Dawn's here. And then the other Dawn from <laughs> Creative Apple Case that you know well, I'm sure. Yes, right. <laughs> Always got to take these first few minutes to say hi to everybody because without them here. They scroll so fast. Sometimes it's hard to keep up. You're right. But if they weren't here, we'd be 
talking to the walls, right? That's right. Talking to each other, which I don't think would be hard. <laughs> but it's so much more fun when our friends are here and then, then it's a party, right? <laughs> That's right. Because, you know, we were almost late because we were chatting so much. Exactly. Exactly. <laughs> and I see somebody saying hi to Star Raymond. So I might have missed Star, but Star's here. She, she's um, a faithful friend. Hey, Maureen, we're so glad you're here. Dorothy, Sandra, Patricia. Christy's here. Bambi Lynn's here. Caroline, another another mutual friend, yeah. I'm sure. <laughs> another Dawn. She made some vinyl pouches today. Fun. Fun, fun, fun. Jane, Rhonda. Kathleen, did we say hi to you already? I think we did. Bonnie. Wow. Hey, Bonnie. <laughs> so good to have you here. And, and we have another Bonnie. <laughs> another great mutual friend, Ashley. Hey, Ashley. Uh, it would be fun to do a uh, show oh, all three of us. Yep, we, we, we would have a great night. time. We'd have to plan an hour ahead of time to get our <laughs> out of the way for sure. <laughs> Amy's here. Lisa's here. I think we said hi to Rhonda. Yep. And now they're all saying hi to each other. <laughs> Darlene from West Virginia. Hey, Darlene. Oh, my. Bonnie's here. Eileen's here. Deborah's here. Birdie. Hey, Peg's here. And Inga, Inga, so glad to have you. You should tell everybody where you're from because my memory is it's a little distance away. And Cindy's here, Marjorie's here. Whew, I know they're going to keep rolling in. So we probably um, should just say, hey, everybody, Hi, everybody. at this point. <laughs> <laughs> we'll do a two hand to make sure everybody knows we're, we're sending them the love. Oh, I'm just so glad everybody's here. Thank you. Thank you for coming. So it's a nice, nice way to start the week, right? Monday, perfect way. Yes. A Monday creative chat. And tonight we're just going to talk about everything, everything we want. Are they talk ready? About. Are they ready for this? <laughs> Let's roll. <laughs> we've just, you know, we've just not really had much time to spend with each other. Right, Stephanie? Mm -hmm. But right. I don't know about you. I already feel like I've known you for like half my life. Yes, exactly. <laughs> and that's one of the great things about this whole virtual community and online community that we we do end up feeling so close to each other, even mm -hmm. when we are, you know, somewhat of a distance away. So that's um, it's just such a wonderful thing. I'm I'm really <laughs> I really feel privileged to be able to hold sewing parties like this. Right. <laughs> Caroline. <laughs> Well, and, just like, um, bring everybody ahead. together, right? <laughs> well, just like you had said, June was a friend. I feel like June is a friend of mine. She is a big supporter, but we've never met in person. Yeah. So I love the way we get to come together and we do feel like friends and family. Absolutely. And Dorothy's already commenting on your jean jacket, which it could be your on. jean jacket she's talking about. Uh, I think she's talking about the one you're wearing and we're going to talk about that tonight. So. <laughs> And Aileen says she loves the virtuals. Um, Cindy's here from Pittsburgh. Hey, Cindy. Angela's here from Texas. Uh, that's okay. You can uh, multitask. We're good at that, right? <laughs> yeah, always. We're going to be talking about multi-crafting tonight, I think. <laughs> yes, and I hear you guys are, are uh, going on a cruise. So, uh, we are. We are. Are you all all full for that? I think there's there a few room? seats left still. There's a, still a few left, but they are currently on a cruise. So I haven't gotten an update lately. So okay. I'm not sure. Okay. We were close. So there, where, there was a few left. Where would they go if they wanted to find out a little bit of information on that? I can post the link or if Reen has got that sheet since she's here, she can throw that in and it's so in sale. 16 okay. is the information. So in sale. Okie dokie. Sounds good. Sounds good. Oh, my friend John is here. John, I want you to come on the show. I've been thinking about that the last few days. So I'm expecting a phone call and a, and a yeah. begging voice on the other end. <laughs> I would love to have you on. Yeah, you are going to have a really good time there. I'm sure June's really excited about that. I know. And Thank it's you, her Rhonda. first cruise. Appreciate your, your good wishes. Um, yes, I am wearing a wrap from my wrapped and embroidery book. Uh, a little hard to see, but it's got, um, there's my microphone there. <laughs> it's 
got um, an embroidered buttonholes that match the embroidery designs. You can see it on the back of the book there at the bottom. And I designed it so that I could uh, put the button in the buttonholes a variety of different ways. Let's see if I can find a picture of it. There we go. There's a picture of it there. So you can really wear it a whole bunch of different ways. And when I made this, I had made it from a knitted one that I purchased. And I don't know how to knit. And when I bought that one, I, it was like the greatest thing I ever wore. So I came up with this embroidered version of it. And since then, I've made two, two more of these just out of plain knit fabric where I built in a buttonhole into the, uh, the seam, which is kind of a cool technique. And then you can wrap it around and wear it however, however you need to. So it's I like, love wraps. I I'm just stuck on them. <laughs> I'm absolutely like, stuck on them. I actually have a blanket that, as I travel, it travels with me. So a wrap is like my portable version of a blankie. Yep, and that's what I say. It's like it's like um, it's like an adult. <laughs> it's like a woman's blankie. Yep. And I don't care where I go. I seem like I always wish I had something, whatever season, just to, just to take the chill off, whether I'm in a cold environment or I'm, I freeze more when I go down South than I do um, anywhere else because y'all <laughs> turn that <laughs> air conditioning down so yeah. low. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and I'm not used to it. We're so hot and because it's that humidity. So yeah, we, have, I know. We, we keep a restaurant you don't have to ask for extra ice. You're just, your glass is going to be cold no matter what. <laughs> I know, it's crazy. Oh, Bonnie's here from Canada. Hey, Bonnie. Oh, we're getting some nice, nice comments here. Very nice comments. All right. So we have a lot to talk about tonight. And I'm going to be the first one to admit that crafting, creating with vinyl is new to me. Mm -hmm. Um. I, I, you know, when it first started coming out, I was like, hmm, I don't know how I would use that on my this, that, and the other kind of things. And I had played around with probably just about every fabric in existence. And I thought, but it's not fair. You can't fold it. You can't, right. like, you can't pet it like you can, this, you know, <laughs> stuff in your stash. It's just not, not quite the same. So, I kind of just, you know, held off on it a little bit. And then I have to tell you when crafting and um, cutting collided with embroidery with the dime products. Right. Um, I don't know if I have my, yeah, I do actually have my, and in particular, I got this kit, Shimmer yep. and Shine, which includes your company, Caesar Vinyl. Mm -hmm. And correct. this is HTV, correct? That's correct. Heat okay. for vinyl. And then matching thread. So I actually have my one spool of thread here and, and my my vinyl from that pack. And guess what I'm going to put it on? You couldn't guess. No. I kind of like jean jackets along with wraps. So look at this. You couldn't guess. That's going to be, <laughs> that's gonna be gorgeous. Isn't Perfect. it? So I got it all planned out. I had the um, designs all loaded into my machine. And that is tomorrow's project. I'm going to be stitching from my uh, Just Jackets collection, and I'm going to be doing the stars. Now, a lot of Ooh, people really good. Um, are familiar with this collection. It's on my website. Yeah. I won't go into details on this, but the stars I did originally on a white jean jacket, mm -hmm. and it looks very patriotic-ish, and I guess in, in, uh, in Texas, they kind of looked at it like it reminded them of their football team which I never thought about that because that wasn't in my wheelhouse. Yeah, right. So I uh, was thinking, you know, what could I do that would be different? And I think the stars would be really pretty in either jewel tones or these are just, just, oops, there goes my thread. These are just. They're soft. Made to match. And so mm -hmm. I'm really, really looking forward to having fun with this. So since we're talking about HTV, let's, yeah. let's define it a little bit, if you wouldn't mind, because you are the expert and um, tell us, how it can be used like fabric. Okay. So I, you know, talk about this all the time. Unfortunately, this isn't new. We've been doing this for at least my first, I have a sample from nine years ago. So this, 
This isn't new, but it's new kind of getting out there. We knew about it in embroidery stores, but you know, it takes time for everybody to kind of hear about it. So I'm looking on my floor right here because that's that's a crafter for you. So when you take that carrier sheet off of HTV, heat transfer vinyl, you know, it has a clear carrier sheet and that's what holds it together when it went through your cutter. So if you take that carrier sheet off, throw it in the floor like I do, now it's just a shiny fabric and it just is going to look like this. And then you can lay that down and you can applique with it. What makes it phenomenal, and I really do mean phenomenal, is before when you were doing an applique, you had that placement stitch and then you had the tack down and then you got your scissors and you cut around it and then you had that finishing stitch. With this, you don't have to. You can do all the way to the satin stitch and then just rip it off. I so can't wait for that part. I'm so excited for that part. But I can that's just the it. part that makes it so <laughs> nice. Now, not all HTV is embroiderable in the same sense. So the ones that we talk about the most are glitter HTV. And okay. you can tell it has a glitter. It has a texture. Strip flock, which feels like a suede or a velvet. To me, it feels like low nap cuddle is an easy way to describe it. It, mm -hmm. it just feels softer. So that's another one. Aurora, which is one of our newest lines and how it color shifts. You can embroider with this and you can embroider with diamond dust and brick is another one. And brick is mm. 600 microns. So it's a thicker vinyl. Okay. So it really gives a raised look to it. So I that's see. one of the newest ones that I've been playing around with embroidery. Before we had 600, we had a product, it was Brick 1000. And I didn't like embroidering with it as well. So that's why I've been kind of playing around with the 600. It definitely has texture. It has weight to it. So is it I, higher number, thicker substrate? Yes, okay. right. Okay. And the Brick is one of the few that we actually, that's the only one that we have a number with it. Otherwise, we might in our description talk about how thin a vinyl is that it's 80 microns and that kind of but brick is really thick so okay. i love it but i'm not going to do a big design with it because it's too heavy to me I, for me it makes me kind of feel sweaty because it's a big design with my stitches i love it on hats i love it for a monogram small things not okay. a very large design so, so let's let's back up just a little bit and we got a couple questions but okay. i'm gonna, i'm actually peeling mine away that's right so when i want to use this like fabric mm -hmm. i completely remove this yeah. um vinyl carrier covering. sheet carrier and sheet it's carrier sheet and is it also a protective sheet for the actual ironing process if i was yes. ironing it okay yes. right so since okay. we're we're um, not using it like that. We, we mm -hmm. peel that away. However, the wrong side of this actually will fuse to my fabric, correct? Right, correct. Okay. I always recommend, and this is just, instead of ironing it from the front, I flip and I iron it from the back. That way this is going to fuse. And it's not that you, you know, you could put a carrier, a cover sheet over it. Like a press, it'd be like a pressing, pressing sheet cloth. and sewing. Okay. I just don't like that heat on my thread. So it's not the vinyl that I'm protecting as much as I'm protecting my thread. Okay. Because you know, some colors kind of get a sheen to it when you heat it. Mm -hmm. Yep. So yep. for me, it's keeping the heat and that pressure off of my thread more than it is worrying about protecting my vinyl. So, so I flip it over and iron from the back. So again, from a, from a novice, I'm going to speak as, as a novice on this. Right. You're, you're taking all this protective layer, you're ditching it because you yep. really don't need it. You're using this as if it was a piece of applique fabric. Yes. However, we don't have to do that tedious trimming. Mm -hmm. We could cut it with a cutting machine if we want mm -hmm. to. And we'll get into that a little bit later. Yep. And then once it's all stitched and I want it to permanently fuse to the fabric like I would mm -hmm. any other applique that I've applied right. a fusible webbing to, 
it's a good idea to fuse it from the wrong side because you're contacting more of the fusible side from the wrong side even than you would from the top side probably right, right? Okay. and like i said it's i'm trying to protect my thread that i've appliqued with more than i'm trying to protect my stitches right off the Perfect. camera view i have a heat press so i use a heat press so high temperature and definitely high pressure so that's one of the reasons i don't want it on my thread okay yeah. So you got it. So what if you don't have a heat press? What would you use instead of iron, to make sure your iron was good enough? Okay. So an iron and you see my knuckles here, uh -huh. I'm going to say good force. Don't iron it, press it, pick it up, press it, pick it up. You don't want to sit there and iron because you want that pressure. And what setting would we put the iron on? To fuse Usually that cotton down. to linen. Okay. And so I, you know, especially because you're doing that from the back, that way you can press that. And again, it's not as much for the vinyl. I just, I don't like that sheen that sometimes will happen if I press my thread. Gotcha. So we got a couple questions and I think we answered this one and bring up Bonnie. So Bonnie says, do you cut it before or after you take the carrier sheet off? So you could cut it with a cutting machine if you wanted mm -hmm. to have your your piece cut beforehand and then it would stitch over it. So the cutting would all be, you know, done by the cutting machine, but because it tears, would that be almost like silly to do it that way? <laughs> to, to me for a glitter, I'm never going to put it on my cutter machine and yeah. I love my cutting machine, Yeah, but it's just one more step that I'm going to have to take. Yeah. I'm going to, yeah. I'm going to set it down. It's going to do my tack down and I'm that person that walks away from my embroidery machine. Gotcha. It's going to finish stitching. I'm going to come back and I'm going to smile when I just rip it away. <laughs> I know. That's the fun part. I can't wait to do the ripping. <laughs> I may call you up and see you can hear my rip when I yeah. rip. <laughs> I think we need to Zoom tomorrow. Yes. Just so I get to see your we face. Should. We should do time. a ripping session. <laughs> yep. Yeah. So Reen says Aurora is beautiful used in embroidery. Yes. Um, I'm sure. And um, Ginny says she's used uh, strip flock and the the, the sparkle. sparkle the mm -hmm. shimmer and shine is what uh designs and machine embroidery calls it right right and that's and a, shine, glitter heat that's transfer. the auroras that they are now they now have aurora yeah i think i have some aurora is <laughs> that's it it's almost Our, it's like an iridescent type of characteristic yeah. right i love it i yeah. so it's really neat because i'm going to hold this up so you can see how the color goes this way Okay, let me bring you on. Now over. watch. So this is how, see the lines and it color shifts? Yes. And if I turn it, how it looks different? Yep, I sure do. Yep. It's, I love, 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 love Aurora. I didn't think that there could be a vinyl that I would love as much as I loved my glitter in the past. You know With what? I want... I want a bunch of it now. Yeah. <laughs> I want a bunch of it. <laughs> so, guess what? Hmm. You can't rip Aurora away. Oh, You're going to have to know. cut it. Uh -huh. So that I'm going to use with my cutter or I'm going to use it with scissors. Okay. Because it is more fibrous, it doesn't rip easily. So it's it's a really heavy fabric. Good to know. Gonna so you're going to use scissors more. on that one. Ashley says she can't wait to try brick um, in embroidery. Um, Cindy says she can't imagine embroidering with brick, but um, if you've done it, I'm sure uh, you can make it come to life, Cindy. Absolutely. And then, uh, if my husband's watching downstairs, maybe he will bring me my sample that I have a brick down there so I can show it on camera. Okay. Maybe I'll send him a text, you know. Go talk ahead. amongst yourselves as I do that. It's always nice to have a helper. We got <laughs> some, some good comments and questions here, though. So Cindy's saying, would you take the carrier sheet off if you were cutting applique? So um, on, on any of these, you do, yes? On anything and yes. everything, you take the carrier sheet Yeah, I take the carrier sheet off. Okay. Um, and then uh, Chrissa says, can you name the embroiderable vinyls again, please? Okay. But which ones so, can you embroider through? Okay. So we're going to give them in two categories. Okay. We're going to say that if you use glitter, strip flock, and anybody else out there can help me. So glitter and strip flock, 
you can definitely and diamond dust you can rip away very easily okay and brick so those four you can just rip away if you're using aurora you're going to want to use scissors to trim because of it's heavy but guess what any other htv you could just press that to fabric and now you have a shiny fabric Ooh. and you can still embroider with it Ooh. so well, just like because that's kind of my i hate to say like my jam i love taking different colors and i've made a kaleidoscope of just different pieces of htv pressed it on quilters cotton and now I have custom fabric, right? Uh-huh. Okay. Or if there's that color, like we have, let's say, I'm trying to think, an electric green that is a beautiful color. I could never go to a fabric store and find that shimmer, that color. I'm just going to press it onto fabric, and now I have my own new fabric. Okay. So would that be the same with what you call PSV? So pressure sensitive vinyl? No, no. no. Okay. So PSV is sticky vinyl. It takes okay. pressure to make it stick to it. So I'm looking down for a sample, of course. So that we use on things that don't get washed, don't get worn, right. crafty items. Okay. Yes. Let's save that for a little, a little later. Yeah. We'll stick with Everybody that. erase that yeah. for a moment. We'll okay. get back to that okay. one. I threw I threw a monkey wrench into that yeah. one, but we got some other good good questions. So um, Kathleen wants to know: Are the Caesar embroiderable vinyls labeled for that use? We have on Caesar North America website. We do have a blog, and it's we just and we just put out another video that lists all the different vinyls that you can embroider. Okay, so I've got the uh, website there. It'll take you to the right place. You don't want to type in just caesar.com like I did because you won't get to the right place. These are not in a for North America. Yep. So we got the banner going there. Um, and then uh, Teresa. Hey, Teresa. Good to have you here tonight. Uh, she wants to know if the glitter element is secure or do we get sparkles spreading? So I know you're going to just say a re resounding. Yes, it is secure. And yes. I'm going to tell you, Teresa, glitter drives me. Teresa knows me. It drives me out of my mind and makes me want to scream like real glitter because like, yeah. it drives me crazy. So that's the very first thing I did when I got mine. I opened it up and I decided, all right, let's see what this does. And I rubbed it, <laughs> rubbed it, rubbed it, rubbed it. And I looked at my finger and there are no sparklies on there. Okay. I'm going to say this in full disclosure on the carrier sheet sometimes you will have a couple that'll stick to that carrier sheet yeah. because it is a you know it's glitter that's been pressed and ashley she just says i loathe loose glitter i have never met a human that hates glitter as much as Ashley does. <laughs> Ashley, you and I are on the same page. <laughs> I mean, I love getting those beautiful cards, you know, especially holiday time with decorated with glitter. But I literally, I like, I like handle them with, you know, kid gloves where I put them from the envelope to the table where they sit on display. And then I don't touch them because I don't want anything else coming up. <laughs> I I yes I understand. I love glitter. I I think that uh everything sparkles a little more because of it. I I agree. It is beautiful. There's nothing quite quite like it. Um Anne says she loves weeding HTV. Is she crazy? <laughs> I love to weed. I find it very therapeutic. So people that know me, people that are in so Stephanie says they know that I will sit in a recliner and weed all day long while I watch Criminal Minds and I find the 5,000th way to kill somebody. You know, <laughs> I sit there and watch Criminal Minds. All so, right. Well, this is something we probably should have done at the beginning. So let me actually bring up your um, contact information, okay, which is So Stephanie Says on Facebook, right? Why don't you tell everybody um, who's not as familiar with you a little bit about what you what you do what that um what that's all about well so like i said i feel like i'm a professional crafter i have a small facebook group so so 
Stephanie says, because I don't sew a whole lot, just a little. <laughs> so, so Stephanie says, I am a crafter that I love a little bit of everything. And so by loving a little bit of everything, I have mixed embroidery and vinyl and HTV and sublimation, which we're going to kind of talk about. But that's kind of my background is that I came to Caesar to be a craft coordinator. And it's just that I try to coordinate other crafts and introduce each other. So that's how embroidery and vinyl kind of came about for me. It was loving one craft and loving another and putting those together. So I have the best job ever. That is so cool. That is so cool. So that's the best way to get a hold of you, correct? Is to yes. go to mm -hmm. your, um, so Stephanie says on Facebook. Okay. Um, so I will have the link in the show notes for that as well. All right. A whole bunch, I wasn't scrolling down like you were and a whole <laughs> bunch of things came up. So I'm going to pop these up here. Um, Ashley loves Aurora mm -hmm. and she likes to um, pre-cut it on her cutting machine. Um, Tammy uh, says trimming the Aurora is worth it. Hey, Tammy, good to have you here. <laughs> And Tammy is going to be the educator for the dime event that I'm going to be holding on February 14th. So if you're interested in finding out more about that, you can visit my website at letsgoso.com and learn more about that. That is going to be a really fun event. And I can't wait to have Tammy there. <laughs> Ashley wants Ron to go get that sample. <laughs> Look, he got it for me. Oh, okay. <laughs> Great. So, All right. Tell us about that. You want to see this? Watch. Okay. So this is brick HTV. I'm good. So that way you can see that it's thick. Yeah. It's almost not, like marine vinyl, a little bit like marine vinyl. It's similar. Okay. So, but look at this. Watch. Are you ready? Okay. I'm trying to hold it. Look. Wow. Look, I was testing this. So that's why I just have it downstairs. See what I mean about how satisfying that is? Oh, yes. Yes. <laughs> so here, I'm zooming in here. But this is happens to be brick neon. And so for those of you that know about brick, and I saw some comments, this the, the proof is in the pudding, as they say. That yeah. way you see how beautifully that I stitched with it. The question that always gets asked, what size needle do I use? Okay. Well, 7511 for everything. 7511 for everything. Okay. And Ashley kind of taught me early on. She kind of changes her needles every day since she does so many stitch outs. She knows she's starting with a fresh needle. I don't put in a new needle every day because I don't stitch as much as she does, but I do once a week at least if I'm not stitching majorly and if I'm doing a lot of stitching once a day 7511 and I it really doesn't matter what I'm using I find if if I go up it I don't like the hole that it makes when I go to a bigger needle so I like that 7511 thanks Carolyn <laughs> Nothing on. Yes, that is um, absolutely true in sewing as well. The uh, the thinner the thread for so for actual construction, and the smaller the needle you can get away with, uh, mm -hmm. the better off you are because you don't want holes poked in your fabric. Right. You know, you just want to sew a seam. Yeah, exactly. All right. There's a couple more that snuck in here. Let's see. Um, Pat has a really good tip. I love this tip. Mm -hmm. She mm -hmm. uses the uh, skin color for faces. That is fabulous idea so pat is a friend of mine she's a local think, tennessee yeah. and she does some beautiful embroidery work and we had been doing some skin tones so guess what caesar came out with even more skin tones after we had kind of had this discussion a while back so that we have very from fair to darker skin tones great that's wonderful absolutely wonderful Okay, Julie, who's a frequent, frequent friend here. Hey, Julie. Um, she says, which AT, A, HTV can be sublimated on? And we haven't even gotten to sublimation yet. We we did say we were going to talk a little bit about it. Um, so maybe we should do that now. <laughs> okay. 
So, Julie, get your pen ready. <laughs> you can sublimate on glitter HTV. You can sublimate on strip flock, holographic, clear or sparkle, and glow in the dark. Wow, that's a lot. Mm -hmm. I would have had no idea. So, can you define sublimation for everybody? Yeah. So, okay, ready? Yep. Let me get my instructor voice. <laughs> So sublimation, which brother just came out with a new sublimation printer sure did. that is very affordable. So that is going to even get more people into the sublimation market. So sublimation is not new by any stretch of the imagination. It's just now more affordable for the home crafter. Sublimation's actually been out for about 71 years. So if you were at mom's, grandma's house, and on the wall, there is Nixon, Elvis, JFK, or Martin Luther King on a plate. Guess what? That was sublimation. Oh. So it's not new. It's just now affordable. So sublimation is a printer. Looks like just a regular printer. But it has a different ink in it. Instead of having inkjet ink, it has sublimation ink. This is my very quick tutorial on this. Okay. It requires a large polyester base. So this coffee mug, I cannot sublimate on because it does not have a polyester coating. Typically, I can't just go to Walmart and buy a mug and it have that polyester coating. So it would need to be an item, a blank that was made for sublimation. But there's other things that you can sublimate besides having a mug. So you could do, guess what grow grain ribbon is? Yeah. 100% polyester. polyester. Yeah. So you can sublimate on polyester ribbon. You can sublimate on sequins because sequins is 100% polyester. You can sublimate on our glitter, our holographic, and those vinyls. Why? Because it has a very high polyester content. You can, pop, you can also sublimate on t-shirts. But... It needs to be a light colored t-shirt and it needs to have oh, very high person. content of polyester. So okay. if it was 50-50 blend, then only 50% of that ink is going to show up and be present. So that's where that kind of that gamut is. You want it to have a high polyester so that all the color shows up. So that's kind of sublimation very quickly, but I love sublimation. I love that it can fill in the gaps from one craft to another. Reen knows I love doing in the hoop bags. So I love making my own liners and I will take a, like a sateen fabric, uh -huh. the kind that, you know, 97 cents a yard. And then because it's sateen, it's hundred percent polyester. Yeah. Then I sublimate on it, and now I have my own liners for those in the hoop bags. How, so lots of ways that you can marry those together. How, Guess what lace is? That's so interesting, and it's crazy because those of us that are garment sewers, and I, you know, count myself <laughs> right there at the top of the list. Um, we tend to go through the uh, through the aisles of the fabric store, and we read the label. It says polyester. We go. We turn our nose up and then we I go know. and we try to try find something else. You know, I mean, a blend maybe isn't so bad, but that's really interesting because we're going to be looking at those fabrics in, in all new ways. And I have to tell you, like, I, I like to shop at Hobby Lobby and I was there recently. Um, I wanted to purchase an apron to embroider on full embroidery, no HTV or anything like that. No sublimation um, for uh, one of my great nieces. And I wanted to make it something um that that I knew she bakes a lot. So I wanted to make it like highly washable. So I tested a few of them before I purchased one. And if they washed and wrinkled, I, I, you know, yeah. I said, no, no good. So I found this one and it looked like canvas. It was mm -hmm. cream color. And I brought it home and I looked at the label. I said, a hundred percent polyester. That's crazy. It's but strange. I wanted to dry it. And then later on, I found out that they have a lot of product like that that actually is designed for sublimation. So who knew? Who knew? Okay. I want to answer. I saw one comment. Christy Gray. Okay. Asked, let me, let me 
let me hide this one as I, okay. I took it too quick. What, did, what was Christy asking? She asked if you need to put a Teflon sheet or something similar to sublimate it. So something like this. I'm not going to say the word Teflon except for reading it out loud. I yeah. say nonstick cover sheet. Correct. So no, you do not ever want to use a nonstick cover sheet with sublimation. So that was a great question because I wouldn't have remembered to say that. Very good. You're going to use something like butcher paper, even copy paper, uh, because you want it to throw away because that ink's going to get on it. So you don't want leftover ink here and then press this later and it's going to show up here. So all you want paper that you're going to throw in the trash after you use it and Sublimation requires higher temperature, so typically 400 degrees. And this can start to sweat and get moisture, and that'll show up in your design also. Uh -huh. So would you say then, Stephanie, that you really should have a heat press if you're going to do sublimation? Yes. Okay. I do, because an iron, it's hard to find an iron that's A, going to get to 400 degrees, and you're only going to be able to press this much. And you're going to have to hold it for at least one minute, if not longer. So can you imagine holding heavy pressure for yeah. one minute and not that's, moving your mind? That's going to be a carpal tunnel just thinking yeah. about it. Yeah. So that's where I would definitely say use a heat press because it's not just temperature. It's temperature and pressure. Okay. Okay. Very good. Um, Cindy asked a good question. It was a little ways back. So they're, they're, mm -hmm. We love your questions and your comments. Keep them, keep them coming. Um, and if I don't catch it, um, pop it in there again if I miss it. But um, Cindy wants to know, do you need to digitize in a specific way for the vinyls? I'm, I'm going to say yes and no. Okay. And, and that's because there, if you have a traditional applique, you're just going to, you you have that applique. It's the cute little fox. You've done it on all your kids and grandkids and nieces and nephews outfits. Instead of using fabric, you're just going to put in your HTV. No special digitizing. It was an applique design. Now, and you're going to press it from the back to adhere it, just like you would press it if you had put heat and bond onto your fabric. Correct. Okay. So I'm going to say, you do not have to do anything special, but I will say, and this is a, you know, I, I am not an affiliate with Dime, but I love working with them. Their cut and stitch software, they created a inside stitch to hold that vinyl down because you know, it just rips away. So I, it is kind of specially digitized in their software to be able to give it an extra tack down on the inside. Okay. With so a now, straight stitch. Like right. Basically. It's just a, it's a little run-in stitch to oh. tack it from the inside. Okay. So for that, yeah, you after seeing that technique, I utilize that software and I include it on all of my projects now. Interesting. Well I'm gonna do a sample before I do my whole jacket now <laughs> to make sure that I got it that I got Good it right, point. which is always what I, I I need to practice what I preach. It's always yeah. best to test. It's always best to test. <laughs> well, I say test cut, test cut, test cut whenever you're using a cutter, and I say test stitch, test stitch, test stitch before yep. I do a That's design. Hard to say, but I bet you say it. <laughs> <laughs> That's right. But okay, so Donna asked, Hey Donna, good to have you here and um your card that you sent me was absolutely beautiful. I don't think it had any glitter on it. I don't think it had any glitter that came off <laughs> that I remember. I'd have to look at it. Oh, my. Um, is there a Caesar app? There is, and it is available for Android and for iPhones, and it's very basic. It's Caesar HTV. And what is great about that app, and I'm pulling it up right now, uh -huh. is that it will show you the Go ahead and pull that, that I love and about it up to the screen if you want to. I'm going to pull it up and it's going to give me a choice of all the different types of HTV that we have. So I'm going to go because I love glitter. And guess what? Here's the colors. Uh huh. How nice. And so then I just hit that accidentally. It also will give us instructions. So if you are new and you've got 
a cutter and you're really not sure how to cut it, it will even give you instructions on blade setting suggestions, heat press suggestions. So we, of course, we show our cutter and then we talk about other cutters. We have Cricut's, Ayers, Makers, Brother Scan and Cut, Silhouette, Roland, and Graftech. So we give that information as a starting point for every one of our products. Okay. And then it tells you how to do something with a home iron and then how to do it with a heat press. So I feel like I should be a walking commercial all the time for the app because I use it all the time. I'll be at an event and somebody will ask me something and I go totally and I'm you, like, oh, just a moment. Did you know we have an app? Yep. I, I act like I'm showing them the app. Really, I'm just refreshing myself so that but I you remember can't what hold to everything in your head. There's just yeah. there's too much to remember. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna bring up one more, one more here. Um, Christy just needs a little bit of clarification. So she says the HTV will stick to the paper though, correct? Or okay. do you have it? it? It may have been that she and I were talking, I may have misread her question. So I typically do, if I'm going to sub on glitter, I put the design on my shirt and then I add the sub on top of it. If I wanted to press it ahead of time, I do have a nonstick sheet that I just use for sublimation. And so then I could have this and then I would sub my design on top of it. And I'm going to lean over out of camera view just to pick okay. up something. Okay, that's fine. While you do that, I'm going to scroll through here. <laughs> so this is lemon sugar. This was a live that I did the other night. And I remember that this was nearby. And then I sublimated the duck on top of it. Oh, so that okay. way, this is lemon sugar HTV glitter. And that's a sublimated duck. And there's the little duck right there. Okay. All so right. that kind of helps helps talk about that yeah, one. Yeah, definitely. It's just, you know, like I said, it's, it's, it's new. It's, it's not new, but it's new to a lot of people because of the availability of um, product that has come out recently. And June's asking um, what size the printer, um, the brother printer goes up to that. I don't know, June. I don't know that off the top of my eight head. Eight and a half but... by 14. Okay. It's eight and a half by 14. Okay. Mm -hmm. So it's like a, like. Typical like... is eight and a half by 11. But if you, can you can buy the 14 paper okay. and change your margins it's eight and a half by 11 printer that you can kind of go up and down a little bit on it okay kind of, kind of that is would that be legal size paper I yes think? i think it is no no i think like i don't know it's close it's close <laughs> it's a little bigger than you think it's going to be so that's that's good jenny says she's purchased um several uh thank you the, so much yeah very cool very cool and um callie just installed the app, good for you. And I love it because we all have that friend that wants you to make something and they're like, you know, it's purple. Well, my idea of purple and your idea of purple can yeah. be very different. So yeah. I'm like, here, pick, tell me which one. All right, and Caroline's <laughs> telling me, yes, um, it is legal size. I, th I thought so. I haven't printed a size uh, legal paper for, for a while. Very good, okay. All right, there's another question I wanna sneak in here and then we got some great samples to show. So I want to pull those pictures up and we get, you know, you'll learn more just from, from talking about the pictures, but um, just to clarify. Um, so Francie asks about the, the needle. Um, I'm going to think you meant embroidery needle, correct? Yeah. Yes. 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 It'll it's actually universal. say um, yeah. embroidery. Universal would be for sewing. So right. Francie and Microtex um, generally speaking would be for sewing as well. There are, have been a few weird times when I've used a Microtex needle for embroidery, but almost never because a Microtex needle will break very easily. Mm -hmm. And you know, you're taking a lot more pounding when you're when you're embroidering. And All after right. you break one of those needles and it flies and it scares you to death, you don't want that to happen again. <laughs> no, not at all. Not at all. All right. So I'm gonna um bring up another thing here and switch it around so that we can both be on here. And um, let's talk a little bit. Well, let's talk a little bit about your jacket. First of all, I don't, did I get a picture of your jacket in, in here? Yes, I, I do. do. Okay. So we'll, I, we'll talk about I that. I it tonight. It looks wonderful on you. I love it. 
So I'm going to kind of talk about, and Reen had just commented the designs in your jacket. So I'm going to go backwards one step. Yeah, I used to be a nurse. I still am a nurse. Aww, but know that. so nursing got to be very traumatizing for a while. And I loved craft. And so I crafted to kind of soothe the wounds of being a nurse and the demands that it is on your brain and your body. So after my youngest, I wrote his last college tuition check, I decided that I could afford to take a pay cut and not work as a nurse full time and to craft and try crafting full time. So that was kind of my transition. So I frequently say, just if you've ever been around anybody in the medical, you know, we have LPN, RN, MSN, PA, DO, all of these initials that I thought I was getting rid of. But no, I just started a whole other career with DTV, HTV, PSV. So again, initials. All right. So, what is DTV? What is DTV? DTV is the best new product that Caesar has come out with. And I would say that even if they didn't pay me, DTV is printable vinyl for your inkjet printer. Uh-huh. Inkjet. A $39 inkjet printer created this. Wow. And this has been washed a few times. And so I can't stress it enough. There are, are other printable products that have been on the market, but they were not printable vinyl. It was a printable right. paper that we pressed on and then it would start cracking and things would happen to it. It was like printable rubber exactly is yeah. kind of what it was almost. So this is vinyl. So it's a Caesar product. It's vinyl that is in your inkjet printer and it's just a sheet. It's really white on one side. It's slightly gray on the other side and you print on the white side. And I love it because it has a very soft hand. It's got a very stretchability. And guess what? I cut it with scissors. I didn't use a cutter. I printed this out and I just used a pair of scissors. Oh, so wow. you don't have to have a cutter. And Reen and I did, we did, she did her dogs. I did a vacation picture and we showed those for a live to, that you can sew with it. You, of course, you're going to need a backing. So mm -hmm. I take that DTV, I put it on quilters cotton, and guess what? I now can sew, I now can embroider with it. Wow. So here I have on here, you're going to see the sunglasses. The glasses, the hot pink is glitter, and then the lenses are holographic. Okay, so we're talking about this here. Yeah. Or, yeah, both, because I've got glasses on both projects. So here's glasses. Oh, okay, okay. We'll flip around here a little. Yeah. I see. So There's the glasses there. Gotcha. The hot pink is glitter HTV, heat transfer vinyl. And then the lenses, that would be the holographic. And I love being able to stitch with those just because it really does look like I've got a pair of sunglasses tucked in my pocket. And it gives a nice flexibility. One, because we have so many colors. And two, so many textures. So we were talking about trends. To me, I feel like that's one of the biggest trends for 2024 is textures. It's having, like I said, that strip flock to where it mm -hmm. feels kind of velvety. Glitter has a rough. Brick has a thickness mixing all those different textures together just like you love your denim jackets i kind of love my denim jackets mm -hmm. i'm gonna sneak over and get one of my favorite ones okay and i brought up um kathleen had a question before it got lost i wanted to get so what about um she said i'm gonna say that sizal so kathleen i'm not exactly sure what you're talking about um and if if uh, Stephanie isn't sure either, then I'm going to ask you to just maybe reword that. Why don't you reword that? And um, was there I, used to be a webbing kind of that was like a sizal that was 
That's the only way I can think of that word. Yeah. There used to so, be some type of a webbing. So ask it again and um, and just, you know, word it a little bit different. Uh, Christy's learning so much. So am I, Christy. This is a, this is a lot of this is a whole new world. All right. I'm going to bring you up full screen for that. So as you can see, you can actually see through this jacket. Yeah. That's so crazy. This, this, I took the panel out and this is just bridal netting. Oh my, that is amazing, Stephanie. Absolutely. And this is DTV direct to vinyl with your inkjet printer. And then I just pressed it onto that bridal netting. And then I added some earrings. I added some rhinestones up here. I added some pearls. That is absolutely unbelievable. unbelievable. And then I added just a little fur. Mm -hmm. just, you know, when you've got something like this, you need a little bit something extra, right? Absolutely. <laughs> and then on the front, very subtly, I have some vinyl. And it is the Audrey Hepburn where she says, I believe in the power of love. I believe in laughter. I believe in the first kiss. That's what's here. Oh, my. Just kind of subtle because when you have this, you need something that's a little bit subtle, right? That is absolutely amazing. Absolutely and again, amazing. I cut that with scissors. I didn't use a cutter. I just printed it and then decided to, you know, add to it. So I've done a couple different motifs Ooh, that way. That is absolutely amazing. Amazing. Thank and, you for uh, the nice compliments. Yeah, Deb, Deb's here. Deb's the one that called called out the, the right name <laughs> for it. Hey, Deb, from Somewhere Sewing. Glad to have you here. Okay, so Kathleen did um, uh, ask again. She's saying that Joanne Fabrics carries something um, called Sizal. Uh, does do they sell Caesar vinyl at? They do Fabrics? carry Caesar vinyl. Yes, yes, I bet you that's what you're you're thinking of. I bet. I bet. I bet. I bet. <laughs> hey, Bobby, good to have you here. So much information. I know. I know. Get the app and and then get a notebook and then order a bunch of stuff to. Uh, experiment with and you know that's what i'm gonna do i'm gonna actually create a little notebook with this because yeah. for for some of us not all of us but for some of us this type of thing might be something we do on occasion to add to right. this, that or the other whereas we may be doing embroidered something that you know regular embroidery with regular embroidery thread on a regular basis so you're not necessarily going to remember. So I think that would be, maybe we'll even do for my local ladies. I don't mean to um, leave <laughs> anybody out, but we might do a class on this. And in fact, I am working with um, a friend who has just opened up a new sewing studio, not too far from me. We're partnering together on some classes and just a little, um, little drop of some information. We are working on doing some virtual classes where we could have hands-on students and do virtual at the same time. So stay tuned. We're just, just getting the equipment and the ideas going on this, but um, that would open it up to, to everybody. So Anne is asking, where's the best place to buy Caesar vinyl? Great question. Great question. And I'm going to be vague on my answer in some ways. So you can always send an email to info at CaesarNA.com and give us your zip code and we can tell you an authorized dealer near you. We carry it at Joann's. We carry it at Michael's. I love a brick and mortar. If people don't realize it, but we have vinyl in hundreds and hundreds of small embroidery shops. So think about even how many people have the dime packs. There's another place to be able to get that. So I always like to, I don't mean to be vague, but there's lots of places. And I like to find, a, I always say, find a local dealer near you. Um, there we go. this is a nice <laughs> kit to get, um, right. the, uh, shimmer and shine kits come with a, with the, with the glitter vinyl all ready to go with the matching thread and a download for a free design that goes along mm -hmm. with it. So it's, you know, then you can use it with other things, but it's a really good way to get your, get your, um, get your feet wet. Get your feet wet. Absolutely. Jump in. Absolutely. Jump in. So there's the, the website again. So if you want to 
um, email them, you can go directly to mm -hmm. that site and, and find that. Very good. All right. Michelle has a great question. I got to tell you, though, I had a whole list of questions. I'm not getting to ask very many of them. <laughs> but that's great. We have better questions here than even mine are. So um, can you embroider or applique with the glow in the dark vinyl? Yes. So here's the difference. With that thinner vinyl, you're going to take that vinyl, the whole sheet, if you want. You're going to put it onto a piece of quilter's cotton, press it, press it. Take that carrier sheet off, and now it's just a glow-in-the-dark fabric. And I've embroidered with it quite a few times. And the thing that I always remind each anybody with glow-in-the-dark, it needs to be charged under light. So if you notice that it's not glowing, just set it out, put it a light on it, and that helps recharge it, and it'll keep glowing. But yes, okay. just you're going to press it onto fabric and then treat that fabric just like you would when you're doing applique. Very good. Very good. Okay. So Kathleen's asking just again, can that, um, and I think you mean Caesar, um, Caesar. Be, printed, be printed on. So just, just reiterate yes, again, the, the, say that again. I'm sorry. The DTV, DTV is the, that's the printable. printable vinyl. So, and it's called easy color. Okay. And it's Easy Color DTV. They sell it in packs at Michael's. And again, you're authorized. Your local Caesar dealer will have that for you. And check your, yeah, check your local uh, sewing yeah. shops before you even go to the big box store. You know, I somewhere love. like Somewhere Sewing <laughs> yeah. and places like that. Because not only do they, you know, they uh, carry a lot of products that we don't think necessarily they mm -hmm. might have. Um, they may be able to get them for you if they mm -hmm. don't have them already in. And it's also a great place to take classes because a lot of those places are doing events and classes. So, okay. Okay. It says Cecil is a coarse fabric. Rope is also made. So somebody's trying to clarify about that. I think it, yeah. I think we maybe have a confusion of terms here. So yeah. um, it's just, um, yeah. If you type that in, you're going to, Sizal, which Ginny's saying is is um, spelled like that, which would be a type of of material. Not Caesar, really. let's spell it for S I S E R exactly. will be the vinyl on Joanne Caesar vinyl. That would be it. So yeah, Kathy's yeah. already likes the the idea of a of a class. Eartha loves the jacket. Thank you. Uh, and let's see, we had somebody wanted to know what you wear with that jacket. <laughs> I wear typically a white or a black t-shirt underneath it, okay. just so it shows yep. straight through to color. That's why I love jean jackets. Just... Yeah. And okay. it's funny, right out of camera view, there is a portable clothing rack. And I have just on that rack for quick reference, there's probably 14 denim jackets. I probably have 30 of them in a suitcase that I travel with when I do shows. Wow. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I, I hear you on that. All those samples, all those samples got to get toted back and forth in order yeah. to be <laughs> shown off. Um, so Reen's saying Ashley made a beautiful bag from glitter vinyl used as fabric, fused it to cotton. Yeah, it was gorgeous. You know, that's got to be in my, in my mind for tonight. I mean, you've told us golden things, but that's like, that's my takeaway tip. So that, that I love that I would not have thought of mm -hmm. in a million years. Yeah. And yes, Bonnie, this is recorded. It's going to either um, <laughs> live on YouTube or on my Facebook page. But if, um, if you are on Facebook and you'd like to share it to your own Facebook page, I see you are on Facebook, um, then it will live on your page and you can find it really, really easily. So um Cindy's wondering if you have a show schedule listed online. I don't have it listed online, but on So Stephanie Says, I always kind of list what, where I'm going to be. I This coming Friday, I actually get to be in Tennessee. I'm in Greenville. And so I always post where I'm going, what shows I'm going to be at. And we're getting ready to start show season. So you yeah. know how they kind of run in cycles. My next big event that I love teaching at is Everything Embroidery Market. And that one is in Biloxi in April this year. Okay. So that will, you know, I have dates on that. 
but I try to just keep it updated on. So Stephanie says where I'm going so that people can stop by, say hi, send, you know, I love it. Definitely. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah. Julie, Ar Julie already wants you to come back. Julie, I've already got that. <laughs> All right. That's already, all, already going to be my question before we, before we, uh, part with each other tonight for sure. <laughs> Greenville, Tennessee. And I know people didn't even know there was a Greenville, Tennessee, but there yeah. is a Greenville, Tennessee, and it's spelt with an E after the N. Okay. And one of our presidents was from there. Very good. Um, so Audrey wants to know if you can use a laser printer. Okay. It was, I'm going to say this with a full disclaimer. The product was made for an inkjet printer. We have had customers use a laser, but there, here's the caveat that I always say. Some lasers get really hot while it's yeah. printing because that's what a laser, that drum keeps it warm as it's coming through. Mm -hmm. So that heat can have, can kind of activate that ink. So I'm going to say you could try it and see how it works with your inkjet, your laser printer, but just it was created for an inkjet. People have used lasers, but some lasers can be too hot. Yeah, they really operate totally differently. And I right. only know that because we have a, we have both. Yeah. I use the laser for all my black and white printing. Mm -hmm. I use my, you know, my brother inkjet printer for everything else. But yeah. I have bought labels, you know, just regular printable labels that that say you can use them on either or. And they they if they say either or, they work better on my inkjet than they do yeah. on my laser. Because sometimes that, especially if you do more than one page, like you said, that drum gets hot. Yep. And then the ink smears. So, I so guess really what? Know. Here's something we didn't say mm -hmm. that I'll, I'll throw a plug in here. Brother Print Moda is an inkjet printer. Correct. So guess what? You can take that fabric out, put that DTV in and print. And that way you're getting to use it for two things. Yeah. So that way, for those of you that if you've got the Print Moda printer, it's an inkjet printer you can print with your DTV in that printer. Very good. Done it. Yep. Just like you can print other fabrics in yeah. there. They, they're, you know, they're, they're packaging it with their own uh, yeah. wool of fabric, but there's, there's always other options for sure. Um, Anne wants to know if you'll be at the mid Atlantic quilt festival in Hampton, Virginia. I will not. And I don't believe I can say definitively, we don't have any Caesar rep that's going to be there. Okay. I have started getting to go We've to some of the original sewing and quilting expos. I've taught oh. at some of those. So this year we'll see how many I get to, you know, hop into. Good to know. Good to know. Yeah, Mary Lou, I hear you. <laughs> <laughs> oh, my. All right. Um well, we got to go through the rest of these pictures because you had so many cool things to to show us and talk about. So that that um, that first one, let's get you get you back up here, um, where we and we've already talked about the collision <laughs> for we sure. Can, it. You can see the vinyl there. You can see the thread. You can see the embroidery designs. You can see the you know the fact that the the um, HTV was used in place of fabric, all that mixed together. There's that gorgeous jacket with so many, so many great, great, fun things on there. I love it. And then you showed me a picture of uh, a little black dress mm -hmm. um, embellished with Caesar products. So on this one, you actually used strip flock, holographic, and uh, faux rhinestones. Well, actually, the holographic is cut in small circles. So if you look at the belt, that's what comes across as a faux rhinestone technique. Okay. So it's the technique to where if you didn't know, you would think those were little rhinestones, but they're not. They're actually flat because it's out of holographic vinyl. Very and interesting. It just kind of changes the look of it. I lost the belt to that dress. It was actually a bridesmaid's dress. Uh -huh. And after I wore it somewhere between transit, I lost the belt. I measured the little loops. I went and bought some black ribbon. And to dress it up, I created that faux rhinestone. If I would have put real rhinestones, it would have been heavy. And, and it wouldn't have tied as nicely because it would have pulled down. Yeah. On that. So that was... That was uh, a way to turn that little black dress 
into something that I would actually wear again. Mm -hmm. And I decorated the bottom of it just to one to show that I could <laughs> and <laughs> two to make it a little bit different from the wedding that I wore it to. Nice. Well, you're already giving me an idea because when you said, um, you know, how we could use, I forgot, I already forgot what it was called, uh, the Aurora, uh -huh. you know, if you have a cutting machine and you can cut little circles, yes. um, you know, or, or even I'm thinking of some of those things that like, um, you know, like a snowflake, but not a snowflake, the things that are connected together, there's uh, lacy looking designs. <laughs> Yeah, 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 yeah. Let me bring that up. So, exactly. It looks, right. it looks like like glitter and rhinestones got together yeah. and had a baby. And guess <laughs> what? It's flat and it's smooth. Yes. So, but and yeah, flexible. that's, a, and that's and, a perfect example of rhinestone technique and garment worthy. Absolutely, very garment worthy. Garment -worthy. Yeah. Linda says that really makes it makes it look classy. Absolutely. And Anne, you and me, to, uh, let's see, Jana is giving us smiles, but Anne is saying that um, her head is spinning with ideas and mine is too. Absolutely. Absolutely. Okay. So Kathleen has a quick, um, how hot to adhere it? I think you answered that, but if you want to repeat it again. Um, well, yeah, it would. One of the things that I say, we, we kind of, act like polyester is really delicate. It's actually very sturdy. So again, when I was talking about sublimating, it's at 400 degrees. So polyester can handle high heat more than we think it can. But I'm always going to say I take the corner of my shirt and I test it so that if, you know, just to see, but usually polyester can really handle a higher heat than what we realize. Gotcha. All right. So I did look at my own questions and even though most of them aren't going to get answered there, there's one kind of what I was thinking about because we've, you've thrown out so many great ideas, so many possibilities. Um, let's just breeze through the rest of these pictures so that everybody can see these. So we've got, um, you did uh, a whole mixture of embroidery and what else with this particular, which you told me is a jean jacket, right? Right. So that one, I'll say it was an urban threads design and the ballerina was done as a sketch stitch. And then the butterfly skirt was obviously embroidery. I did not like her when I sketched her out with my thread. She just, she didn't pop the way she was worthy to. Okay. So with software, I converted those stitches into a cut file and then I cut it with my cutter. So I kind of went backwards. I took a, a cut file, an embroidery file, and turned it into a cut file. I'm lucky that I have some technology with machines. So I used my snowman stickers so that I could line that skirt up exactly oh. where I wanted her to go. That's so amazing. I pressed the ballerina. Then I used my snowman sticker to get the ballerina skirt on there. And then she just looks so plain that I got the gold. And I wish I could say that I stitched that freestanding lace and I made it with, I did not. <laughs> you could have. You didn't have I, to, though. <laughs> I went to Hobby Lobby because they, they have the least, I love their trims because they're so affordable. They are. You're right. And you can go to some stores and spend $20 for, you know, a foot. Or you can go to Hobby Lobby and look through theirs and pay $3.99 for a yard. Yeah. Yeah. And so that is just, I actually have that one. So I'll reach. Okay. While you go grab that, I'm going to just um, thank everybody for being here live. It's always just so much fun to have you here live. <laughs> but if you're watching on the replay, thank you too. Um, if you'd like to uh, give the video a thumbs up, that would be wonderful. If you'd like to subscribe, like, hit the bell, all those good things that you know are, are good <laughs> to do to keep us going. If you want to keep keep this show going, all of those things definitely help to keep those show, that show, the show going for sure. So go ahead. Show that again, um, please. I, I didn't mean to. No, you're fine. I just was. So that way, you know. Oh, that is. So just, she has, you know, she just 
shines with thread. Even I tried it with a metallic thread. And you know, I love my King Star. Yeah, it was it looked a little heavy. So she looked a little clunky, I guess, is, you know, so that was why I changed her to vinyl. And I think she's just absolutely beautiful. And it really lets the embroidery shine and it lets the vinyl shine. Oh, just absolutely stunning. That That is a prize winner. Absolute, absolute prize winner. And, and there's several viewers that are out there that behind the scenes, I will have to say that I send pictures to my projects and I'm like, so what do you think of this color? What about this color? What about this color? So this this poor little ballerina was done in 13 colors before I was really happy with her. Oh, my. <laughs> so you really worked for that one. <laughs> I did work for that one. So Sharon is asking, what software did you use to convert from embroidery to SVG? Pep. Okay. I so use my, my dime. And and I I pro by yeah. Designs and Machine Embroidery. I will actually yeah. have a link to designs and machine embroidery in the show notes. Um, so if you're interested in purchasing anything from them, you can go directly uh, through that link and you will find um, all the different things that we talked about tonight. And I'll, I'll make a little bit of a list of, of some of those things so that you can catch the names again. Definitely. Yeah. Everybody says that is so stunning. Thank you so much. Totally stunning. Well, I think you have one more picture and I think we're going to wrap up in just a few minutes here, even though I think we could do like a, yeah, a another hour seven the midnight show. <laughs> Can we order right. pizza and just have it delivered? <laughs> so here's just uh, just a combination. You know, when we started talking about uh, garments and how you could use it for for applique and but, you know, crafting all of those types of things, it all comes together with all the same products and the same techniques. It's just what you're making is different. Oh, okay. so I, we'll bring that up since you have that live. Well, and I, you know, made, you know that, that little, again. the little Scotty dog that was in that picture, uh -huh. that actually was a coach purse that I ruined by not having the top of my pin on and ink bled. Ooh. So I just cut, you know, if I'm, I've done that. And I will show, because here's part of my projects. I'm a crafter, right? So yes. if I ruin something, I'm just going to cut it apart and use it as an applique fabric. Because how many people don't want coaches and applique, right? Oh, my. That's so fun. That is just so fun. And, and you're right. As, as um, creatives, we just um, <laughs> we just don't want to throw anything away. So this is a combination. So this is the Standing Gnome from Embroidery Garden. I love gnomes and you can tell I love flamingos. So this is DTV. I need to print a new one. This was my Halloween one. So okay. this is that printable vinyl joint. So okay. that's, and then I just pressed it to fabric and then I created this project. So this was one color. It's black with pink. And then this is pink, pink with black. So that nice. was printed with an inkjet printer onto DTV, direct to vinyl. And then I pressed it to quilters cotton. And then I just embroidered with it. So that lets, so now you could make a gnome for every single day of the year with a different fabric. And I would never, you know, I tend to get lost at a fabric store because I just get here. I can print exactly what's on my mind. I can draw something. I can create yeah. my own and then just print it. If you can dream it, you can create it. Yep. yep. And June, I don't know if you're still here. If you are, thank you so much. Um, yes, it has thank been you. a fun, inspiring and very, very informative show. So just loved having everybody here. Um, I'll just share my website really quick. If you, you know, want to keep up on, on what's going on, um, definitely um, check out uh, let's go. So.com. I've always got new, new things there and posting new tutorials and new blog posts. And a lot of times I'll do a, a follow up to even a live show when there's more information than I could possibly um, <laughs> use in, in one place, which happens regularly. So 
why don't we go ahead and um, and wrap this up, uh, Stephanie? But before we do, I always like to ask one question of everybody. Okay. And that is, <laughs> what are some of your tips, your ideas? Give us some inf inspiration for making your um, your creative space a happy place. Well, I am like some crafters that I'm a messy crafter. And so I feel like for one, having bins like that are behind me back here, having bins, that way I just can hide stuff. It's not that it's organized. I can't, you know, it's just hiding it for the moment. And so that's kind of my organization is having things with bins to put stuff away in. But I think follow your whimsy. I mean, I'm a grown woman with flamingos around because it makes me happy. Yeah. And I change things frequently and move stuff around because it makes me happy. Earlier, I talked about I loved glitter. And in my other craft room, I actually did a video to where I poured glitter in the paint so that the glitter could be on my walls. Ah. So I think, you know, I love sparkle. I don't mind, you know, sharing that fact at all. And I think sometimes we get scared to try stuff to where that filter kind of got cut off for me. I don't mind ruining something to experiment. So if I can offer any advice whatsoever, to me, it's don't be afraid to try this and this. Because the worst that happens is you've, you know, you've spent a little bit of time and you don't love the project. Absolutely. But you've tried. And I really, really, you know, I'm reading Ashley's Glitterless I know, Environment. I have to bring that one up. <laughs> she really does hate glitter. She yeah, really, really I does. hear you. I hear you, Ashley. I, 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 I'm a kindred spirit. <laughs> well, well you're kind of fun. You're <laughs> we're getting um, some other people saying what what they're doing and what they're what this is making um, them think about. Um, let's see. Oh, somewhere here. You were here, Janice. I can't find you now, but I know Janice just redid her room. Um, Sharon loves sparkles, but um, we ought to do a show sometime where I just invite y'all on and everybody um, shares their ideas for making their uh, space, um, you know, a happy place. But that's a great, great thing to end on. And this has just been so much fun. So great to to get together with you, Stephanie, and everybody thank you so here. Much. So, thank you. Thank you so much. And <laughs> thanks, everybody, for all the comments because, you know, and a lot of times, and Joanne knows, we don't get to see everything. So I do go back and I watch and then I try to comment on things if I can because it's hard to see it. But I appreciate the love. I appreciate the compliments. I'm very lucky. I love what I do. I love creating i love trying to think outside the box and i so the thing that i need to do more is learn how to sew so guess what you know I, i'm 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 watching videos we can get together on that you can, you can uh, get me the get me doing vinyl and i'll get you i'll get you sewing things up but um it, it's just been great it's been wonderful thank you so much we will definitely do this again. Thank you everyone for, for being here. And until I see you again, I wish everybody a world full of pretty stitches. Bye, Stephanie. Bye, Bye everybody. <laughs>